we did it last week with the hurlers their their five mvps um again it's, people will interpret differently i'm just going for the players that kind of make it tick not necessarily the best players anyone wants to see the hurling version at the end of last week's podcast but this week i think fittingly after reaching a league final after a, a lovely league campaign really um where you earn promotion to division two two years after being in the bottom tier the five MVPs from Billy Lee's Limerick football side. Again, there's no right or wrong answers in this. It's just a matter of personal opinion. I think there's one definitely that, like Keen Lynch was with the Harlan, Ian Corbett was named on the Sunday game team of the year. Now, he was definitely shoehorned into cornerback. I don't think I've ever seen Ian play a cornerback. I don't think we ever will. But I presume you went with Ian Corbett as one of them anyway. Of course, absolutely, absolutely, sure. Um, look, he's the heart and the pulse of that that that, that team. He's the man that makes thing makes them tick, you know. And um, you know, absolutely a fantastic player, and has been so consistent for so long, Jack. Absolutely phenomenal. <coughs> Ian Corbett is one of those um, players that would be a shoe in to any team in any any county team. Absolutely fa- fabulous player, and we we just you know we 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 cannot emphasize enough, Jack, the value he's to Limerick is just just not his football, not alone his football ability, but his leadership qualities. Yeah, uh, he's just a brilliant footballer, um, captain for a long time. He's there since 2012. <laughs> he won a Division Four. He got he got relegated. Um, then a few years later, and has helped Limerick back to successive promotion. So he's seen and done it all with Limerick in his nine year or ten years on the panel at this stage. Um, give us another one there, Matt. Keen Sheehan. Yeah. Um, excellent against for men in particular. I thought ran the show from wing back is kind of like a Gavin White, um, a Jack McCaffrey kind of wing back just. All go, all action. Doesn't neglect his defensive duties, but at the same time offers so much going forward. As an athlete, second to none. And you were raving about him for Newcastle all summer. Um, he had a bad knee injury a couple of years ago, but is back better than ever, I think, since that injury. Yeah, well, I, I raved about him seven or eight years ago, Jack, when he came on the county team first. And um, I, I thought I saw... Um, potential in in what is a very very special player in my opinion and um I, i'm glad to say um thanks be to god all those injuries are behind him like he he hasn't had a good run with injuries but but he's back and and um you, you know f- f- last year for newcastle west he, in my opinion he was the outstanding player of the uh, of the club championship and i think we agreed in that jack that you know and he he's brought it and and the the potential that I saw in him six or seven years ago, whenever he came on the county team first, he, he, he's producing it now in spades. <clears throat> he's absolutely crucial for all the reasons that you see. Good defender, but what a ball carrier, Jack. Yeah. Not not the biggest of men now, but what a, what a ball carrier. Yeah, I you think know, to be fair to Lowe, they did a good job on him. He wasn't as effective against Lowe as he was against Well, they, they prevented him from going forward. Do you know, um, so like they definitely got their matchups right, and that's that's another factor in Limerick not getting the desired result is that they were able to put the, the shackles on some of the key players like Ian, like Keane Sheehan, and it just shows the how good they are essentially. That if you can if you can stop them, you're you're stopping the, the, the team essentially. Um another name on my list here is the goalkeeper. And we had the goalkeeper last week as well. I suppose it just goes the change in nature of the game, Donald O'Sullivan. I don't know, was he part of your five? He was. Um, he was again, like, was. like Ian I, Corbett, I, I, leadership. I, I'm still think they're giant captains. I, I thought we couldn't have giant captains anymore, but Dave Clifford and Joe Connor did it for Kerry, so I'm sure. Um, I, 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 I don't know what this thing is. You see, we're, we're, we're tinkering with and repairing things that are not broken. Yeah, like I mean, and um, Shane, Shane O'Brien and Vince 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 Harrington. Harrington went up for the for the Croke Cup, you know. So we either have it or we haven't it. 
Yeah, you we'll know? go with it. We'll go with Corbett and Dina so D Donald Sullivan. But, but, but for, uh, uh, for the same reasons, but the, 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 the career that Donald Sullivan has had, Jack, it's been, he's been so long there between the sticks and his appetite for it hasn't hasn't waned one iota. You know, his, his leadership qualities, plus his, his, plus his downright basic goalkeeping skills, Jack. Yeah, like... You know, he, gets... he, he, he takes a special shot to beat him, and there was no way in God exactly he could have done. He he did the best he could against um, Liam Jackson last week. He you stopped know? Samuel Roy in the first half. He got he did. whatever touch he got on it, slowed it down for Sean O'Dea to come back. And he makes he makes a point blank save every game, yeah. every game, mm -hmm. and yeah. kickouts. Um, to be fair, not the kickouts probably for Limerick are more of a, a system kind of thing. They do manage to create a lot of space, but. Left or right, he always hits that space or hits his man if it's on. Um, like Nicky Quaid, just couldn't fault him and goes under the radar because there's never mistakes to talk about. It's just mm -hmm. consistency, uh, leadership. In Crow Park to the day, um, to be fair, there wasn't a huge crowd. You could hear him the whole game. He was talking to his defence. And like for a defender, that's what you want. You want to be... Because you can't see what's behind you. You want to be told where to go so that you're, you're cutting out these things. Um, mm -hmm. So as a player, as a leader, everything he brings to the table, invaluable for Limerick. And again, what has been there since 2013, like he was there before that, you know, um, never put a foot wrong, invaluable. Um, your fourth player? Killian Fahey. Yeah, I have him as well. And we could be on for a clean sweep here. I talked about Killian there. Um, his absence <clears throat> was really, it really told. Um because in the first the first run of the game, he was in on goal. He was taken out. Probably should have been... It was a yellow in my book, if not a black. But there was no car. But he just gives you that go-forward ball. He played at 11 for three or four years when needed. He's playing midfield now. He plays in... I thought he was centre-back. I thought he was centre-back for his whole career after seeing him from a young age. But kind of like Keen Sheen, kind of a player. Just Very, very, very like him, yeah. <clears throat> um, but a brilliant left foot as well. Did he get one three against Longford the first day in the first 15 minutes? Like, yeah. you can't account for, for that kind of power around the middle. Power is how I'd kind of describe uh, Killian Fahey. Um, I don't know, like, you're very hard to stop and was definitely, definitely missed uh, against Loud. And I think that's a big compliment to players that, that are absent. Um, when you can tell they're absent, um. So he's fairly unique on that team, and as well, nice to have a left footer there in the middle of the park. And your fifth player, Jack. I, I did an awful lot of head scratching, and I haven't <laughs> much hair to scratch uh, the hat off actually when I was head scratching, Jack. Um, on this one, and that I, I narrowed it down to three first of all, um, Brian Fanning, um, Josh Ryan, you might be surprised to think, and oh. Hugh Bork. And you went with, I went with Hugh Bork. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the same as you. I have, I had a short list as well. Um, I'd have Danny Neville in there definitely if he was around. But like that's well, yeah, oh yeah, different. absolutely. Um, Sean Danny O'Dea, was available because you know, Sean O'Dea. Uh, I thought Adrian Enright this year was fantastic. Very very good. Dara Trace in the middle keeps it ticking over. Huge. Peter Nash. Very very for, very solid. Yeah. Um, I, look, you could pick Manion, but I did I did pick Hugh Burke. Um, just. As an intelligent footballer, very different to Danny, um, is probably a small bit slower. He's not slow by any means. He is very quick off the mark. He's built strongly. He's not very tall, but but accuracy is accuracy and intelligence. I don't know. Is there anyone as intelligent as you working in football? Personally, I don't think so. Just he's probably not really an inside forward, but he's scoring three or four points a game from inside there. If he came out to 11, he'd set up as much, if not more, um, brilliant footballer. Absolutely. And um, uh, I agree with ev everything you say about him. And he really, in, in scoring terms, he's a go-to man, you know, and he can pick off that score. And, um, you know, he, he wastes so little, Jack. Yeah. He wastes very little. He wastes absolutely, practically nothing, you know. No, he's an excellent player. I agree with you totally on on on, on Hubert. But I, I agonized in it because um like in 2021, like Brian Fanning was absolutely outstanding. Um and we were we were 
you know, worrying about his loss this year. But um, when he came back, like it was as if he had never been away. Like, um, yeah. you know, he's, five is a bit five is a bit cruel to be picking from a squad of thirty. Like, but well, uh, I, 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 I I would pick fifteen at least, Jack. Yeah, I think I didn't go with Brian Fenning because I think Sean O'D is mm. equally as good. Yeah, so you yeah. know, sometimes you're some players. I just don't think there's a replacement for Hugh Burke, is what I was. It's like Mike Donovan yeah. was you probably say to yourself why why um why was I agonizing about Josh Ryan? Score. Like um and we, we said now if you play it back at the very start of this uh, this um uh, if you play back the cast that we said before the league when we spoke about Josh and that if if Billy Lee could harness the talents of Josh Ryan, that would be a huge plus. Now, I thought he might try and harness him as a midfielder. Now, he's put him in full forward. Very, very good target man. Good, good, good footballer. Um, good free taker. Like, um, you know, and um, fully focused and and on the ball, Josh Ryan is is a huge asset in my view to Limerick. Huge asset. Yeah, he was brilliant over the course of the league. Limerick's top scorer. Now, I know that that came from Freeze, but they're, they're no gimmies um, in football. Freeze are, are difficult. Um, look, you could have mentioned anyone. James Acton had his best league campaign for Limerick. Mike Donovan was brilliant. So was, was Paul Maher. As Brian said, Donovan? Yeah, if you could get the injuries. As you said, you could you could name <coughs> any of those boys. Um, but five, five but is we're, a bit we're, we're in the happy position and we're talking now, Jack, about Division Two footballers. Yeah. Um and there's nothing to say that next year you're you're talking when you're talking about most valuable five, you have the likes of Robbie Childs in there, Tony McCarthy, these kind of boys, Dermot Kelly even is twenty three now, he's coming into his his prime. So yeah, there's a lot of room for maneuver. But it is interesting that we, we did gave, agree. We gave, we gave no mention to Peter Nash. Yeah, well I, I, I gave a small mention there that he took the burden from Danny and, and nailed down that, that 13 yeah, in, spot. In, in fairness, then uh, Nashi was very, very good on 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 the, on the team and like he you know um he, like he gave Billy Lee no option. No with the way he with the way he performed for Kildama Palace Kenry. Yeah, another fella as well, he's kind of shoehorned into corner forward. He's more of a an eleven, twelve, kind of ten kind of player, um, naturally just kind of more of a, a supplier of ball, but mm-hmm. does the role like like you work will score for Limerick um when needs to when the job needs to be done. So it's just interesting there that we agreed on the five because last week the hurl I think we had maybe two or three the same and, and a couple of outliers. But as we said, we could have mentioned any of the players and look we are in a privileged position to be able to mention an awful lot of players for Limerick football, which probably wouldn't have been the case three or four years ago to be fair. But uh, Jack, work... when, um, when you're doing this in future, if you're doing it again, will you instead of five have 15? <laughs> I mean, you'll be still pushing the 15 because I'm sure there's a couple on the fringes that you'll be saying, I'd like to have it. It could be slightly easier, yeah, slightly. But, um, yeah, look again, we don't mean any harm by this, it's just to highlight some players. Um, but they, they were all fantastic, and 